The Serapium of Saqqara in Egypt is one of the most mind-boggling ancient sites, which is certainly saying something as it's close to some of the most impressive ancient sites that we know of anyway. Situated northwest of the Pyramid of Djoser, near Memphis in Lower Egypt, it was the burial place of Apis bulls, which were sacred bulls seen as incarnations of the ancient Egyptian deity Ptah. And I'll link to this Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum page in the description because you can access this 3D model of one of the mummified bull heads from the Serapium itself. And I gotta say, the detail is incredible. The Serapium is a series of subterranean tunnels, corridors and chambers which are of an impressive scale on their own. But then there are these 24 giant granite boxes, or sarcophagi as they label them, lowered into their own individual notches or chambers, each weighing between approximately 80 and 100 tonnes, including the lid, with an estimated ratio for a 100 tonne box, for example, being around 70 tonnes for the body and around 30 tonnes for the lid. The quality of the craftsmanship and the mass of these boxes is just phenomenal, and seems a completely impossible feat to accomplish with the technology and tools the ancient Egyptians had at their disposal, let alone how they managed to transport 50 to 70 tonne blocks to their destinations and carefully lower them into place. So, when looking at ancient constructions like the pyramids, for example, which are above ground, except for their subterranean chambers, we even battle with trying to explain how they could have lifted and placed these multi-ton blocks with the supposed primitive tools and methods the dynastic Egyptians had. Some of the largest blocks in the pyramid are estimated to be at least 70 tons, but the majority of the blocks making up the actual bulk of the pyramids weigh around 2.5 tons each. But when it comes to the Serapium of Saqqara, how do you move a 70-ton granite box through tunnels with only around 1 foot clearance at the side and perhaps 2 to 3 foot clearance to the ceiling, then carefully lowering them into their chambers? It seems an impossible feat. We may be able to come up with some way of moving them with modern technology using engines and hydraulics for example, which still seems like it would take some really creative engineering with today's modern tech. But these people only had primitive tools from what we know. After being buried by the sands of time for millennia, the Serapium of Saqqara was finally rediscovered in 1850, and after exposing the entrance they had to use explosives to gain entrance to the galleries as the entrance was blocked by a huge rock. And under the rock they also turned up a mummy of a man who turned out to be the son of Ramses II, who insisted on being buried with his sacred bulls. The site tour Egypt states, He was in charge of the restoration of the Pyramid of Unas but he had also been governor of Memphis and a high priest of Ptah. Responsible for building some of the vaults in the Serapium, he had requested to be buried with his sacred bulls rather than a tomb of his own. And it's Ramesses II who is commonly attributed with designing the main galleries and chambers of the Serapium of Saqqara, although as Britannica states, Though the area was used as a cemetery for the bulls as early as 1400 BC, it was Ramesses II, who was 1279 to 1213 BC, who designed a main gallery and subsidiary chambers to serve as a catacomb for the deceased Apis bulls who, in death, became assimilated to the god Osiris and Osiris Apis. The Greeks living near Saqqara worshipped this god as Osirapis, which under the Ptolemaic dynasty became Serapis, and the temple was thereafter called the Serapium. So Ramesses II must have started his work on the Serapium over 120 years after they'd already been using the area as a cemetery for bulls anyway. So the question that pops into my head which I couldn't find confirmation on is, was some cave or catacomb system already there which they discovered? Perhaps they even found the entrance when they were digging in a burial spot. But the mainstream indication is that the catacombs were constructed from scratch during the time of Ramesses II. But were there possibly already tunnels there which were then expanded upon? What's strange also is that although the large granite boxes were supposed to be sarcophagi for bulls, there was only one found on its initial discovery, and it wasn't even in one of the boxes. Most of the lids were also already pried open, so they were said to have been looted. There was one with the lid still sealed, which the explorers couldn't budge at all. I'm not sure what kind of tools, if any, they were trying to use to slide the lid open but they ended up using explosives to blow into the pox, and there was nothing inside. Still, in the Serapium they did find 64 Apis bulls together with thousands of inscribed objects excavated, 
but the sarcophagi these bulls were found in were wooden sarcophagi, and also made the appropriate size to contain the bulls in the sphinx-like pose they put them in. So if mummified bulls were what the ancient robbers, for example, wanted, then if there were possibly one to two bulls in each granite box, then why spend the effort prying open 20 to 30 ton lids for between 24 and 48 bulls when there were essentially 64 easy pickings? So yeah, the general mainstream view definitely has some contradictions throughout, but it appears that either the boxes had finished their use if they had an actual function before being abandoned, or the looters were after something completely different. There's a paper I came across by Konstantin Borisov from July 2018, who has masters and PhDs in electrical engineering, and in this paper he offers an alternative theory for the use of the granite boxes. First he talks about them being used for possible fermentation to build up gas and pressure, because with the precision of the fit of the lid of these boxes, it would essentially hermetically seal it, which could then stand a huge amount of pressure being made of granite before popping open. So he points out how granite is made primarily of quartz crystals, and under mechanical stress those crystals generate electric charge, where the more pressure you have, the more electric charge is generated. He then talks about how this generated charge in the granite would glow and could be used to light the surrounding area, above ground also apparently, as it could ionise the air kind of like the earthquake light phenomenon. And there are two facts that come to mind that could support something like this, and that is that there is no evidence of soot from torches being used to light the Serapium, and in his paper he provides a sketch which was done between its excavation in 1851 and its publication in 1855, which shows many blocks stacked neatly on top of the lid of one of the granite boxes, which Borisov says looks like they could have been specifically placed there to counteract more pressure than the lid alone could handle, allowing it to be able to generate more electric charge. I'll link to the paper in the description, there's certainly some interesting things he points out to take into consideration, but I think someone needs to test this method out and actually see if granite boxes can glow when under pressure like this. That would be awesome. And could that even possibly point towards other sarcophagi that we know of actually having a purpose of lighting or energising an area for some purpose? In the paper, there is an example of a granite core being compressed and glowing, so it may actually be possible. But that would be pretty amazing if these granite sarcophagi that we keep finding of varying sizes were actually essentially functional batteries or light boxes of sorts. Another large contradiction is the presentation of the hieroglyphic texts written on some of the granite boxes. A few boxes are almost completely covered in hieroglyphics and inscriptions, but as many researchers have pointed out, they were clearly written with a much lesser standard of technology than what was used to originally cut the boxes. In fact, pretty clearly hand tools like chisels and such. And they're not polished like the rest of the box either which, if it was done contemporaneously, they would have also polished the inscriptions. But instead, we see plenty of imperfections, tool marks, small errors in lines that look like chisel slips, etc., just clearly done in a much later time than the initial construction of the boxes, and with lesser technology. Plus, these boxes were polished to a mirror shine, and are still extremely reflective to this day thousands of years later. Another important thing to note is these texts clearly seem to have been carved at a later time than the creation of the boxes, is that the contents of the writings on the boxes is what the mainstream archaeologists and historians use to date the original creation of the Serapium in these boxes, which depending on how much later the texts were carved, it could be like us carving all over the King's Chamber in the Great Pyramid today, and if our planet suffers a catastrophe and we have to build up over thousands of years again, people would find the Great Pyramid and think that our generation built it due to the writings. But saying that, with our technology we may trick the future sceptics easier as we would make sure to at least make it look contemporary with the time. <laughs> so yeah, it depends if these writings were done within the hundreds of years after the creation of the boxes or if it was thousands of years later after the original creation. Amazingly, one of the massive granite boxes still exists in transit found down one of the tunnels. But after examining it many times, people are still baffled on how it was moved, as there's no evidence of drag marks or sleds or wheel tracks or anything, 
plus there is only around one foot of clearance to the side with perhaps two to three foot of clearance to the ceiling. I can't even imagine how they were to continue moving this thing even though this is the only box found in a place where there could most likely be immediate evidence of how it was moved. And maybe there is but just hasn't been seen yet from the right perspective possibly? I say things like that often but it's true in many cases. We're so closed into our viewpoints and narratives at times that it's hard to look at something letting go of all past preconceptions. Which I do think is at least partly why we still don't know how certain things were done in ancient times. The answer may be right under our noses somewhere and just needs the right perspective and connections to be made. The entire Serapium of Saqqara and especially the construction and placement of the granite boxes is a marvel of ancient engineering that still to this day we can't provide an answer to how these boxes were cut, transported and placed with such precision and care, or is there still a reasonably easy method we're not seeing yet to carving and transporting these massive blocks in ancient times? It's an absolutely amazing sight anyway and I'm sure it'll be spawning theories still for decades to come. And with that being said, I'm going to wrap up the video there and take a deeper dive in the future. So what do you think? Were they actually constructed during the middle dynasties of ancient Egypt like we're taught? Were they constructed much earlier? Was the Serapium discovered and then inherited by the dynastic Egyptians with the granite boxes already there perhaps for thousands of years already? And what do you think of the glowing granite boxes theory? This is still wide open for debate so leave a comment with your thoughts. I would like to give a special thank you to my first Patreon members again also. Your support means a lot, especially in these early days. If you would like to get in on the action for as little as $2 a month, please consider visiting my Patreon page. Apart from that, I'd just like to thank you all for watching. Please subscribe, like and share this video, and be sure to take care of yourselves out there.